my quick little pop art zombie series last year spawned the birth of the zombie, which you are all now familiar with because you are them. But that made me think nothing would be more appropriate this Halloween than to make a series of 3D neon zombies. So that's what we're gonna do. These tutorials will be a mix of easy effects that you can use to create different wounds, looks, textures, and stuff. This is the first of several little colorful creatures. Starting with this neon pink one with exposed teeth and ripped cheeks. When you think you have this awesome new scary backdrop and, and then you look at it and you realize you kind of look like you have antlers instead. Oh well, I tried. So I'm starting off with liquid latex and I'm pouring it into a cup like so. Then gather all the cotton balls you can find or maybe just like five or six. Then roll them out. They see me rolling, they hating. Then I am laying down a thin layer of liquid latex and I'm going to start putting cotton down on top. We are working in thin strips because the first thing that I'm making is the slits in the side of the cheeks. The cotton that you're laying down is going to be your new skin and your actual skin is going to be like your innards, basically. So once you have these fluffy cheeks, you're going to start covering the cotton in latex. If you find that your cotton pieces are sliding around a lot as you're trying to put latex on top of them, the key is to use more latex at a time. The quicker you get the cotton saturated, the easier it'll be to work with because it'll have more weight and it just, I don't know, it's easier. Now you can use the same three steps that we just did to make these slits in the cheeks to sculpt the overall face. So I'm starting with the mouth, and again, same general steps as before where you lay down the latex on the skin first, you lay cotton down on top, and then you cover that with more latex. I use a kind of latex that is very mild. I get mine from a place called Nigel's in LA. I believe that they do sell it online as well on their website. But this can be a little uncomfortable if you have a kind of latex that is not so ammonia free and gentle. So be careful around your nose, your mouth, and your eyes because it could make them water or get irritated. The important thing to know about working with cotton and latex to make it easy to blend the edges into your skin as much as you possibly can is to not have any bald or unrolled areas of cotton. If you have any balled up areas, then they just won't lay flat, especially when latex is all over them. You just don't want balls on your face. That's easy enough to remember, right? I'm building up the bridge of the nose here just so that the eyes look more sunken in later on and so that we can make more of a skeleton type tip of the nose. Oh shoot, the nose ring is coming out. Cotton and latex is not something you wanna get wrapped around a piercing, so I guess just this one time, I will do it. So we've built up the lower half of the face, but then the top half of the face is gonna look weird when it's all painted because cotton and latex pretty much never gets completely smooth. By nature, it's very bumpy and it's rough and it's very hard to get symmetrical. So what I like to do is balance out the top half of the face by just putting texture on top. To do this, it's generally exactly the same as we've been doing, but we're going for less structure now. So I'm laying a thin layer of latex all over my forehead and then I'm going to very lightly lay down thin pieces of cotton on top. Much thinner than what we're working with on the lower half of the face. But you can really do this however you want. This is just how I like to add texture. If you want to use more cotton, by all means. And then once it's laid down, you cover it in latex as usual. If you want it to look more PC, I would use less latex here than you do when you're sculpting down at the bottom portion of the face. Don't forget to carry this down to the neck so that it doesn't just stop at your face. You can also pick the cotton apart a little bit like I'm doing here before it's dry, just to make it extra gross. Because a little more gross never hurt anybody. And then before I finalize everything, I'm just going back in and building up the chin a bit more, making it a little bit more PC, building up the jawline, and building up the top of the mouth. I also decided to add a line down the center of our nose for some extra skeletal sexiness. Now we need to head to the zombie dentist. Need teeth, is what I'm trying to say. I'm covering my lips in concealer first. Doesn't really matter if you do this honestly, but I did it. And then I'm taking little tiny pieces of cotton. Even this is kind of a big piece. I wouldn't do any bigger than this. You need less cotton than you actually think you do. I'm rolling it in latex until it's pretty much fully saturated, like so. And then I'm just using my fingers to sculpt it into a rough tooth shape. 
When you feel like it's a good shape, you can literally just stick it straight onto your mouth, or you can lay down a layer of latex first and then stick the tooth to it. If your tooth is saturated enough, you probably won't need to, or you can also blend down the very edges of the tooth lightly and don't spread out the cotton too much and that'll help it adhese to your mouth better too. So once you've gotten one down, you can add some more teeth and some more teeth and, and more, you know, you know, just go for it. Sky's the limit slash the size of your mouth area is the limit as well. On to the paint job. You can do any colors you want for this. You can do neon like me, or you can do totally realistic skin colors. The world is your makeup oyster. And I'm starting with this hot pink, which looks fuchsia, but it's not, it's pink. It does no justice on this camera. These are Krylon aqua paints, which means they are activated by water. Paint everything pink, or whatever your dominant color is, except for the insides of the slits of your cheeks, the inside of your mouth, and the inside of your nose. Then, paint all those other parts black, or any other dark color. Inside of the cheeks, inside of the mouth, inside of the nose. Do it. Then to bring out the texture of the cotton and latex, I'm using a dark color, in this case purple, but if you were doing skin tones for this look, I would use a dark brown or a dark red. I'm washing this color all over the cotton and latex by putting down the paint and then putting a lot of water on top of it so that it kind of drips and sinks into all the cracks. Do that everywhere there's pink. Remember that if you ever end up depositing too much color, you can always fade this out with more water or you can build on top of it with another color. Water paints are awesome. Then I start filling in the eye sockets with a little bit of purple to add some dimension. And I'm blending it out with a cotton ball because I don't, I don't know why, it's the first thing I saw. And it worked really well, so give it a try. I also decided to grab some matte eyeshadows. These are from the Sugar Pill Pro Palette, and I'm using a blue and purple to shade the tops of the top teeth and the bottoms of the bottom teeth. I'm also taking the purple and the blue to shade the perimeter of the eye socket. Then I'm using a white shadow on the inside of the eye socket and a black shadow on the very outer rim of the eye socket to create more depth and dimension, because I just really want to say that a lot today. I also started putting whites inside the cheek slits and in the mouth and in the nose, but none of it really matters because I filled it all in with scab blood immediately after. Who saw that coming? Anyone? Anyone? Everyone? Yeah, I know. I'm predictable. I love my scab blood. Don't knock it till you try it. Then for some finishing touches to bring it all together, I'm giving myself a quick cat eye. Adding the mascara and the lashes because we are a zombie after all. Putting on some pretty fake hair and some creepy contacts. And then I looked at myself and I knew that something just didn't look right. Something was missing and then I realized what it was. Teeth. I needed more teeth in the slits of my cheeks. It sells the illusion a lot better to have them in there. So if I were you, I would add them in at the same time that you're adding in all the other teeth. And that's it. But you know the coolest part about this zombie? This pink paint is UV activated, which means we glow under black light. Oh, what did I do? Oh, 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 oh no! Black light! I'll, I'll just hold it right here. I'll hold it right here forever. Seems dangerous. This is how you shoot YouTube videos, guys. You just gotta fluff and wing it. You guys think it's so glamorous? No. Okay. I could be on America's Next Top Model with this face right now and this pose and all the work I'm doing. That's right. Thank you for getting, yes, thank you. <laughs> you never know who you're gonna run into in your own house in your slippers, so be prepared for anything. Black light test. I yeah, fail. Yeah, what's this, huh? It's makeup. Yeah, that's a likely story, young man. You saw how people reacted to that hickey. There wasn't a hickey! I know. It's not a hickey, guys! I'm a ginger!